itself that he has a health condition and that she needs to go to a toilet uh, several times uh, during short period so on. It might be difficult for her to go to Hajj. I would say that you need to uh, seek an advice from a Muslim doctor about this issue and see whether going to the Hajj will cause you more complication and cause you more health uh, problems or complications. If this is the case, then uh, he, it, you are exempted until you are uh, recovered from your uh, health problem. Uh, but uh, once you are recovered, surely you have to do the Hajj. But if this is an, an, a constant or a permanent uh, health uh, problem, then you will have to delegate this task to somebody or appoint someone to do Hajj on your behalf as well. Okay. Um, another question here we have from uh, Alia who said that uh, she want to do Umrah but she has a fight with one of her friends and she want to know what she has to do with her before she go to Umrah. Well, it's a very good question. Before you go to Umrah, before you travel to anywhere, uh, because traveling, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a risk and you might die actually because you don't know what will happen in your journey. So therefore, you need to always uh, make sure that you uh, rectify anything that you have between you and your friends. So it's very good that you um, forgive her and she forgives you and you ask her forgiveness and you, you, know, uh, you go and leave, this, uh, you leave your homeland with uh, a good relationship with your uh, friends, inshallah ta'ala. So try to rectify before you go. This is my advice as well. Um, uh, you ask about missing Isha until 12 or 11.30, is it okay or not? Uh, let me clarify to you that, uh, that, that the last time for Isha or the, the, the latest time that you can pray Isha in is the mid of the night, the mid of the night. So let's say that the Maghrib starts at 8 o'clock and Fajr is at 4 o'clock. So mid of the night is 12. Because you have eight hours here, divided by two is, is four hours. So from eight to twelve is four hours. So twelve is the mid of the night and the last time that you can pray Isha in. And this is the, the, the opinion of the most of most of the scholars. That the Isha time extends until the mid of the night. And in fact, it's better that you delay the Isha prayer till before the mid of the night. It is better, it's more rewarding uh, than praying in the at the beginning of the time. So it is fine for you to delay Isha until 12 or until 11.30 as long as you know that this is the time or this is before the mid of the night. Before the mid of the night. Um, uh, we have a question here from uh, sister said, uh, if you have a shower, do I have to take a wudu? If I have a shower, do I have to take wudu? Well, if you have a niyyah to do wudu and take a shower at the same time, then you don't have to do wudu again. Your, uh, your having a bath or having a shower is enough. But you need to uh, wash your mouth and uh, wash your nose. And also at the same time, before that, you need to have wudu. You, have to, you need to have a niyyah that you want to include the wudu within the, 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 the shower. So the, it's, it's a matter of a niyyah. It's a matter of aniyya. And also, if you do the shower, according to the sunnah, the ghusl, according to the sunnah, the sunnah says that you should start with wudu first. Do the wudu first, and after wudu, you take the shower. Uh, so just um, to summarize my answer, if you have aniyya, if you have an intention to do wudu and shower together, then for uh, your shower, or taking a shower is enough as a, as, a, as, a, as a ghusl and also as a wudu as long as you wash your mouth and you wash your nose. Uh, she asked about a meeting or she has a neighbor who is non-Muslim and that um, her husband is helping him by bringing or by buying his shopping and so on and so forth and helping him doing his appointments and uh, she asking, she's asking whether this is the right thing to do or not. Well, it, it is one of the good actions and good deeds that you are doing. To be nice towards your neighbor, even if he's non-Muslim, it is one of the, uh, it's from the Iman. It is part from the Iman, part 
in believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmi al-akhir fal yukrim jarahu. Whoever believes in Allah and in the hereafter, then let him honor and be good towards his neighbor. Even if your neighbor is not Muslim. Doesn't matter. Uh, in fact, we are recommended to reflect a good image of Islam towards our neighbors if they are non-Muslims. Therefore, it is, it is it's an, it's an act of good deed. It is recommended in Islam and it will be rewarded in Shara Ta'ala. You ask about sometimes buying things that are not lawful uh, in Islam. For example, pork. Uh, I would say that you try to avoid this and if he want to buy the pork by himself, you'll get your uh, neighbor, then he let him buy by himself. Okay? And uh, what I would say as well is that um, if he, for example, said that I want as well to buy alcohol, then he should say, no, I cannot buy for you alcohol or wine uh, because it is haram and it's haram for you to carry it to him. Otherwise, anything that you do for him, buying a food for him, buying anything good, any. Uh, or they giving him any assistance and any help or uh, buying any uh, thing that is lawful uh, to him is fine. It is actually not only fine, it is, it is recommended in Islam, it is uh, rewarded in Islam, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, may Allah bless you. Some ulama said that um, uh, if you, uh, whatever is lawful in the deen of the uh, of the person, if the non, of the non-Muslim, for example, if he's Christian and in his deen, it is lawful to eat pork, then it is fine uh, for him to buy, uh, for for uh, uh, for you to help him buy the pork. But however, this is a weak argument and a weak opinion. I would say you should stay away from this, inshallah ta'ala, and only buy that which is uh, lawful, inshallah ta'ala. Um, uh, sister asked about can we go to Janaza or visit the graves? Well, uh, going to Janaza it's not recommended. Uh, going after the Janaza until the grave is not recommended in Islam for women to go behind the Janaza, and also it's not recommended for a woman to go to the graveyard. However, some ulama said that the hadith doesn't mean that women should not go to the graveyards. It means that women should not go profusely and plentifully to the graveyards because the hadith said لعن الله زوارات القبور. Uh, may Allah curse those who uh, plentifully go to the graveyard. And I will explain for, further and explore more on this issue, inshallah ta'ala, after the, the break, because um, there are many uh, evidences involved in this issue, and I will clarify them. And I'll give you, inshallah ta'ala, a summarized answer at the end, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah bless you. So see you after the break. Stay tuned. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.